And so are skilled men. The number of skilled men we should need when the works was finished was going to be hard to find. We started training apprentices in temporary workshops and classrooms. It was an exciting time for them to see the works they were going to man growing up around them. In 1961, we got the first equipment into commission. That was the tippler for the iron ore. Then, in the following year, the pieces of the jigsaw really began to fall into place. The result might have been an ugly conglomeration, but our architects had designed the entire works as a unified whole. <laughs> come a long way from the image of dark satanic mills that Blake stamped on industrial England. Who's talking about England? Monmouth says in Wales, man. The 26th of October, 1962, was fixed for the official opening of the Spencer Works. Her Majesty the Queen had consented to perform the opening ceremony. For the occasion, we had part of the works transformed into a banqueting hall. Several hundred guests had luncheon and heard the Queen speak. After luncheon, the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh went to the slabbing mill. For the opening ceremony, a steel ingot was brought from the soaking pit to the rolling table. The Queen pressed a button, and Spencer Works was in production. By the time the works was in production, the population of my parish went up from 334 to several thousand. On most days of the week, and sometimes at night too, I go into the works to meet and talk with the men. Most of them live outside my area, but some of them do live in the old parish, and it's very pleasant not only to see them in church, but also taking part in the affairs of the parish generally. <laughs> 